What's good? Welcome back. Another podcast episode. <sighs> this is feeling great today. Who knows about relationships as much as this guest does? I don't think a lot of people do. Because I feel like there is a lot that we don't know about relationships that we should know. So, I'm not going to go too far into it because we have a lot to talk about. But this episode is specifically for married couples, singles, aspiring couples, just people that want to be in a safe, healthy, strong, and long-lasting relationship. So we're about to call Rashida, and she's our guest for today. So stay tuned. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. That's awesome. That's great. It's a good week. It's a new week. And I'm excited to talk to you about everything that we need to discuss. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like what? <laughs> the first oh, man. The- The first thing I would say is for you to introduce yourself yeah, and let people know who you are before I even go further. Well, my name is Rashida Mulade Sule, and I'm actually a serialpreneur. Um, At this time in my life, I'm focusing a whole lot more on, you know, marriage, executive wives, wives... Um, young ladies that are about to get into marriage and young men, you know, wanting them to know what they want them to really, really like have a real good idea of what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. And um, have the expectation that if this was to happen in marriage, what would you do? You know, I want to, I need these women to actually know. Are you able to do this? Are you able to do that in marriage? Are you able to to submit yourself in marriage? Are you able to, you know, just to prepare them? Because I'm just so sick and tired of, oh, yeah, we're divorced, we're separated, we're this, we're that. And they don't understand how much effect that has on the children, which are our next generation coming up. And um, I, I love what I do. I love what I do. I just love what I'm doing right now. And it's been fantastic that's been amazing fantastic. Mm. that's amazing so like in the recent past what have you heard that is like the most common it's not a problem but what is the situation right now from what you've been hearing from different couples in the recent years well when it comes to couples that have been married <laughs> for a while um uh, i th- What's basically going on, what I'm recognizing that's happening a lot now is that women are just not having it. They're like, they're like done. And, but what I know that they're not realizing is that many of it, they caused it. Who? You know, Who the caused it? The men or the women? They, they, they cause it. The, the women. Oh. The women, they cause it. They cause a lot, majority of it. Why? Because... Whatever you do not or you're not going to accept in marriage, you should not accept it during dating. Mm. They accept it in dating. They get married the first couple of years. The man is not changing. He's still the same. But you now become a whiner, complainer, this or that. And it gets to a point in a man's life where I love you, but... You understand? I love you, but I can't take this anymore. I love you, but stop telling me to be this. That's not who I am. So women go into marriage with this huge expectation of um, what they think the marriage is going to be. And when they get in, they get extremely disappointed. And they try to bring this man up to this level that they would want him to be. Or that they they see that he can be, but that's not what the man wants. That's not what the man wants. Like for example, now, a couple of days ago, 
I found out that we're not close, but you know, it's like one of those you meet up and it's like, hey girl, how you doing? How you been? You know, even if you haven't seen each other like five years, you know, so. Yeah. And I think the last time I'd seen, we were in 2020, right? So the last time I'd seen it was like 2018. Mm. All of a sudden I'm looking at Facebook and her last name has changed. Oh. Yeah, so I didn't want to jump the gun and be like, because. I'm so sorry. My dog is here, and she would just snore. Like, really? <laughs> hey, Georgia. <laughs> hey, Georgia, exactly. <laughs> Georgia's in the house like, okay, we're not going to go out. Since she's on the phone, we are not going to go out. <laughs> so let me just sleep. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to jump the gun and just, like, pick up the phone like, girl, what's this about? I didn't do that immediately. Then all of a sudden, she's in, I see her in London. She's not with her husband. She's at a dinner. She's not with the husband. Happy birthday. Where's the husband? All right. Mm. Then I just made it my personal business to give her a call. (laughs) After I thought to myself I was not going to make that call. (laughs) Yeah, and then I gave her a call. I think it was a couple of weeks, maybe even months later. I gave her a call. And uh, I was like, hey, Maria, how are you? She's like, oh my God, well, she did you call me? I'm going to play the lotto. I was like, at least I called, you know? Right. So we're like, we're like, get into the gist and whatever in the beginning. And later on, I said, Maria, um, what am I, what, what is this? What am I seeing? Why's your name changed? Oh, oh, yeah, for the past two years, I've had a divorce. Huh? That's like a plot twist. Huh? But you know what? When I found out about her divorce is a bit different. And the reason why I say it's a bit different is because she was her husband was thirty five or thirty six when he married her at the age of age of seventeen. Mm. He married at the age of seventeen, so I'm looking at it from like my daughter's perspective, like right, like I, yeah, you know, like my daughter's not old enough, like to even know how to be responsible, like to, but it's not like she had this dating type of situation or whatever. Her parents gave her a way of marriage, you know? So when I was focused, I was like, so you never really, you know, like, fall in love? Like, wow. she said, no. He just went from my parents' home to another, to it seemed to, to be another parent home. So she has four kids for the guy. She said she would have she left a long time ago, but her mom kept keeping her there. And her problem was that it's not really the age, age, but the the fact that the guy doesn't want her to shop. He doesn't want to, you know, look good. Yeah, dude, everybody know you're about 70 now. Can you at least try to look good for me? Wow. But instead, they want her to look like she's an old lady. She's supposed to try to drag herself down, make herself look old just to fit his status. She says no. So I'm like, you know what, Maria, that's a bit different. I've never really had something like that because I have a girlfriend who her husband's also 30 something years older than her but she calls her husband sex most chocolate like the man is on his he's GQ dressed up go to the gym get his nails done get his you know pedicures done wear the big nice glasses drive the nice car you know he'll hold on to a cigar look good you know so she said he brought her up to Paul you know oh, what I'm wow. saying? She said, but when it seemed as if, so my girlfriend was saying, when it seemed as if you go out or you guys have a function at your job and you're supposed to invite your husband, and they said, oh, Maria, that's your dad? She said, girl, that is so embarrassing. I was like, so are you leaving because of an embarrassment? She said, no. She said, you know, when you just done it for years, like, do this, wear this, let's do this, let's do that, and you just want to do nothing. So that's, that's one. And I think majority of what's happening now is that it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. I can't even, I can't even begin to really go, go into the so many of it, but these are some of the ones that I'm experiencing, which is husband or man leaves America, go to Nigeria, which I literally thought that I've taught them better. <laughs> like this should be, don't do those, don't do these things anymore. Don't right. worry. And they were so glad to Nigeria. I go to some village, get some girl. She's a nice girl. She's pretty. She's smart. 
and you go to the village, you go bring her, and then you bring her to America. Then you try to lock her in, like just keep her in doors. Um, but eventually, the girl says, "You know, I, I, you know, I've had three kids now. I want to go to school. I want to do something with my life." Wow. You understand? She now goes to school. Hello. She goes to school, and guys her age are like giving her the eye. It's just like running away from the whole thing. Like, I'm married. Don't these people don't these people understand that I'm married? Damn. Um. And she doesn't get involved in all that. But what now gets her so upset is the fact that when she has to study longer in the library, stay longer in school, and then she gets home, the husband's now having, he's feeling what? He's feeling a bit like, oh my, I hope this girl doesn't end up. So his mindset starts to go into, I hope she's not leaving me. I hope she's not seeing younger guys. I hope she's not, you know, this kind of thing. And I usually tell these guys, like, look, what you think about, you bring about. Once you start to think of those things and you don't trust her and you don't you don't take care of her like she's your queen, then, yeah, it's easy for a woman to say. So I try to tell these brothers, treat your wife like she's your queen. If she goes anywhere else, she wouldn't even want to go anywhere else. Because I have another person who I know that married an older guy. He takes care of himself and he takes care of his wife. On her birthday, they are out. They don't stay in the house for her birthday. He would get a nanny to watch the kids. He intentionally take care of her. You understand? When she told him 30, this guy was about 66. What? He had a huge party for her. Yeah. But he takes care of himself. He takes care of her. And, and eventually, because of, you know... Because also, eventually, she started realizing that, wow, this guy is much older than me. They left They left the church. They started going to another church. You know, they left the church that people are going to be, like, wondering, ah, she might have found out. So the other one that was going to school became a nurse. After she became a nurse, you know, she's doing her work, doing what she got to do, still focusing on her husband. But check this out. Husband don't want to do nothing. Husband don't want to work. Yikes. Yeah. Wife is now making eighty something thousand to a hundred thousand. And because she also, you know, is a human being like a man is, she <laughs> wants to take care of her family too. Right. The man now wants to build a house. Oh my the man now wants to some of her money. Like, you wanna build a house, okay, go do your business and go build your house on your own money. No. Then he has to remind her how he put her through school. Then he has to remind her how he took her out of the out of the, out of the, the, the doom docks and brought her to America. And they don't understand that people hate women hate for you to say some crap like that. So you're telling me that you you brought me out. You came to my village, where is my village? Where I'm very very happy where I was to be your wife in order to put me through school so that I can be working I can be working and give you the money is, is that what this is all about that sounds like a bank transfer yeah. <laughs> a bank transfer <laughs> a retirement plan <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, 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 and these nurses they go to they go to work and they talk to other people yeah you know they talk to other people they get to see husband and wives in love and, and they get to see all of that you don't take her out you don't whine and dine her. You don't, you know, her birth. You don't do nothing. Like, she should just know. She should just understand. And it's hard for me to tell these girls, oh, just pray. Because it's not even about the prayer. They, they tired of praying. They're like, well, she'll be tired of praying. Mm. And I get it. I get it. So now I got to go to the guys. So now I have um, uh, the Facebook Live, my personal Facebook Live. When do you go I, on it? Oh, God. I've, I've been on it now. I've been going on it, like, consistently since, like, two weeks ago. What day and time? What so days? Okay. Um, I try to make it, like, a Tuesday. I do Tuesday at 12. Okay. And I do uh, I do Tuesdays at 12. I do Thursdays at about 11 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And I want to add Friday to it as well. Um, nice. And I, I talk to these guys, and I do live, so they're able... Some of them... You know what the funniest thing was? What? This Friday passed. I talked about why 
do you marry up? You marry up, and then when you bring her in the house, you want to dull her down. You don't want her to be about her goals anymore. Because she got children, she got to take care of you. My God. I think right now I probably have over 800 and something views on that. Just from wow. Friday. It was crazy because I was really, really like, you don't do that. Like, men, y'all need help. And the, it, and, and the issue is, I'm not saying that a lot of women don't have issues, but why would you marry a woman that you know that, that you didn't do your due diligence to find out who she is, what she's about? You know, yeah. that's what we have. That's, that's what's called courtship. Courtship. You court her for a minute. You get to know what she's about. You get to know her likes and dislikes. You know what I'm saying? You get to know her likes and dislikes. Um, you get to see her temperament. What type of person is she? If she gets this off, what's she going to do? Take TVs and start slamming, slam dunking them? Mm. You know, you yeah. need to know all of that. Because you see men, men enjoy marriage. They go into marriage, they enjoy marriage. Men enjoy marriage. But, is there, is, 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 but they enjoy marriage if they have a woman who's, who's, who's able and ready to stick it through. Who's able and ready to stick it through. Who sees that she needs to pipe, pipe, pipe down a bit. Especially in the mouth. Mm. Ooh, we're quick with the mouth. Ooh. Quick with the mouth. It's like a razor blade. What does the Bible say about that? A man and wife. He says it's better for a man to sleep on top of the roof than to live with a nagging wife. Facts. So I'm trying to take our ladies back to what really makes a marriage work. What are some of the key things that you need in order to make your marriage work? Or are you just going into the marriage for the wedding? Mm. You know? I think going into the, the, <sighs> yeah. I just think normally these days it's like there's an intimidation that men have been going through when they see a woman that's successful and doing well mm-hmm. and they yeah. want to tie them down because they don't want their man ego to be replaced or whatever word you want to use but I think another thing is that there's not a clear demarcation of guys being loyal to their wives and it's not fair. It's not fair. And then the girls or the women or the ladies talk to the men like they're nothing. And then that makes the guy become domestically violent. And yeah. then that's a case. So yeah. when you look at the root of the problem, it's not that the guy pulled the trigger or the guy gave you a black eye. It's what conspired before that. No, nobody will ever. They don't. Those girls don't talk about what conspired. They don't know that's because their mouth is like a razor blade. But they don't think. That's why I say it's mostly. It's mostly. It's, I, I don't want. They don't think, and, and and I don't want to say. They don't think, and they don't have good advisors. They don't have good advisors. They don't have people to tell them the truth, because women go into marriage with a whole different concept. From men? Uh, yeah, and men go into marriage with a different concept. You understand? Let's say two very successful people get married. That marriage still don't work. That's true. That marriage still don't work. Why? Because she's like this, you know, let's say, depending on the, on the type of job that she has, too. If she's uh, into sales or she's an executive for her job and she's, she's this, she's that, she gives orders. But she needs to also mentally know that. But when I get home, okay, I gotta pipe that low. I gotta. I got also got a boss. At home. Right. Okay, I got a boss. Like somebody was saying the other day, I was listening to this guy. He was saying, he says you have to pick, which is marry the man that you know that you can allow, or you would love to lead you. That you can listen to. You got because men will come with proposal, but which one did you end up picking? Mm. With every man must have that respect. 
They, it's 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 the it's how they were created. It's the ego in them. They have to. So it's not the respect of oh my lord. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> It's not that, yeah. but don't make him feel like he fully. Don't make him feel like he ain't nothing. When you make him feel like, excuse my French, he ain't shit. And somebody else outside looking at him, and he had he had the job, and somebody else at the job looking at him like, oh wow, he's so awesome. Like what you got on? Right. What perfume you got on? It's not so good. He left the house. His wife didn't tell him that the perfume smelled good. But. I'm not, let me not, because a lot of women get upset, like, Rashida, we could have told him that yesterday, or he pisses off today, why would I tell him that his perfume's not good when I'm pissed off? I get it. I get it. But that compliment that he is needing, he is now getting elsewhere. Exactly. He can come home and be that husband and you just sit down and say nothing. Sit down so that you just know that you got a husband at home. But the person is who's actually winning his heart right now is the one that's giving him compliments. That's you're not, not stressing him. That's not every time he do something, he's not doing it right. You're not on your knees praying, but you're on, you are you standing talking. Mm. Men do not want somebody to compete with. They don't want. They don't want you to be up in their face. You're not supposed to be the enemy. You're supposed to be their ally. You're supposed to be standing beside them, knowing that we're doing this together. You understand? Yeah. We were created in order to, first of all, help the man, help the man to 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 big up his dreams. Like, okay, sweetheart, what is your dream? What is what is your aspiration? Let me see if we can do this together. Let me see if I can help you in this area. You understand? But that's something that a man should have talked to a woman about. Because you see this woman who is who is you know she's she's big she's big baller she's this she's that she looks real good taking care of herself got her money got her house she got this and that's the woman that you want to go marry okay then before you say you want to marry this woman you should talk to her like how are you when it comes to respecting a man how are you how do you take do you take orders <laughs> not really orders like I'm ordering you around. <laughs> Right. But honey, can you please make me spaghetti or whatever today? What? I ain't got time for that. I got a meeting. Okay. How long is he going to take that for? How long is he going to continue that type of life? Even though he knows that you're all this and all that and you're a bag of chips and all, he still wants his respect. The guy that I said I was listening to, he says, um, pick a man, pick a man that you know that um, you'll be able to respect his leading or his leadership for example I love Obama who shout out if they said that man if they said that man was talking right now I would listen I love I love being under his leadership I don't know everybody can say oh he didn't do this he did that he, did. he can't take care of everything he did as much as he can he could you know what I'm saying yeah like the way my husband lead our home as a woman I'm a person who's like I'm the first child of my parents so I have this this born it may seem as if it's bossy but it's leadership I lead them this is what you should do this is how you should do it my husband didn't, when he came when we met he didn't he didn't he didn't he's not a bossy person he's not a bossy person at all like but he's a he's a goal oriented person. Yeah. What is, what is your goal? What would you like to achieve in life? And he will go he will go all out with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he has another way of getting me. Like I used to always try to get my way because that's how I did with my dad. I would try do this to do this and get my way. That worked with my husband, but then when I was sad, he looked at me like he could be doing something. And if I'm sad, and I'm walking around the house, and I'm like, I'm sad, I'm sad. Like, I'm expecting him to be like, why are you sad? No. To him, he's like, maybe you're just having your moment. I said, what? I'm having my moment. Now I just want you to say something. He said, oh, I didn't know you should have just told me to. I'm like, what? That's so stressful. <laughs> you know, so eventually as we grew, as we grew in this marriage, 
I know the type of person he is. Yeah. I even went to go check out his personality traits. Do you uh, know personality traits are huge? People don't know about these things. <gasps> huge. In my course that I'm building right now, that I'm about to wrap up, I have that in there. You have to have your guy take the test. Have him take the personality trait test. You take the personality trait test. If he cannot break everything down to you, his likes and dislikes, or things that he is more fond of, you will find that out in the personality trait test. Right. You will find that out because if he fills that out, it will literally let you know that this guy is 30% melancholy. He's um, 40% this. He's, so you'll be able to put those characters together and know that, whoa, okay, this is a man who won't take no crap. But every now and then he can deal with people. He is real goal oriented. So you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. When it comes to this, their personality, don't, they don't, you can't change anybody. It's who he or she is. You can't change anybody. So over my years of 19, being married 19 years, I thank God that with prayer, fasting on my side, he brought my man to me. Mm -hmm. I found my man. So if I was to say, during our marriage, he's done some things, so I'm packing my bags and I'm leaving, then where am I going? <laughs> That's like, a good like, question. Like, like, yeah, where am I going? Like, God already said he the one. So, so where am I going? I'm the I'm the bone. I'm, I'm his. I'm the bone. I'm the rib that came out of him. So, if I should go anywhere else, I'm going to pick up somebody else's somebody else's body. I'm going to pick up somebody else's husband. Then it's a domino and, 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 it's, and it's not. And I'm not going to be happy there. And I'm going to be I'm going to be miserable trying to force myself to stay so that they don't say, oh, um, yeah, that's her, that's her third or fourth marriage. The whole problem is it mine? Right. So you got to learn. I mean, there was something that you had seen in this man that made you marry him and let it not be the money. Because if it's the money, honey, that means that you are, you, 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 you're cheap. Because anybody can be bought. Anybody got a price if you're if you going to price yourself. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I get you. Baby. A woman is, is a priceless jewel. We are priceless. We are priceless. But if you now saying that, oh, he gotta have some money. Oh, if he ain't got no money, I can't marry him, girl. A whole lot of people got money. So what's gonna happen is you're telling me you can, you can. That's why they say a lot of women these days they can be driving the best car, looking, looking, looking nice, and they getting their butt whooped in the house because they are there for what? The money. No yeah. enjoyment. Nothing. Mm. So my biggest advice to women is that, to ladies, know your worth, know who you are. Know your worth, know who you are. Because the problem that we're having now is a lot of women, the reason why a lot of marriages are not working is literally because they don't love themselves in the first place. But that people can... People are coming together. Yeah. That's huh? true. But I also think one thing I've come to realize here. Um, just in general is that some of the women that are being treated like that occasionally probably don't even have that root like their father wasn't probably there the mother probably no. treated them wrong yeah. or yeah. you know so that has transcended into their so own personality a, woman, a guy does a little thing they think he's gonna leave anyway so they always they always have this guard up exactly hmm. so that is one of the reasons so how how can you tell someone that has gone through that that has no other place to go i mean of course you you can pray you can talk to god and have faith and build but the relationship within people how does someone get out of that mentality that has been there all their life that tr they're trying to change they're trying to impact their generation or change the status quo but they can't because there's a there's a force there's a there's a thought process that they probably that haven't got over a lot of work to do Oh. That man has a lot of work to do. That's why he needs to he needs to be matured himself and he needs to know 
where is she coming from? That's why I say two people that do not love themselves are coming together to, with the mentality of she's going to complete me. She's going to make me happy. He's going to complete me. He's going to make me happy. So when they now come together and they're, and they're now noticing on some days that, you know, my, my cup, and my, my joy is really not as full as I thought it would be. They have that void in them. Then they start to look for other things that's going to fill that void. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if two men came, if it, oh, I said two men. Oh, love my cold. <laughs> <laughs> if a man and a woman, if they would, if they really, really want to go into marriage, it shouldn't be a hundred percent because they love each other. I can love you and you not be good for me at all, but I love you. You understand? There's different types of loves. Yeah. I love you, but you're not good for me. So I thought, I cannot. They need to take that test, first of all, to get to know each other's personality traits. Then they also need to do another write-up of where they're coming from. Because you see, a lot of people will fake it till they make it. The mentality they have out there is that I don't want you to think that there's anything going on with me when there's a lot going on with them. And a lot of men, it's hard for them to communicate the thing. They're not, you see, because you grew up with two parents, is the reason why a lot of the things that's happened to you in your childhood, you're able to literally open up and talk about. Yeah. Freely. Because that's not who you are now. Right. But that was your past and that's what happened to you. But whether you like it or not, to tell you the truth, you're not married yet. But if you don't deal with those things before you do get married, the devil's going to show up. Mm. He's going to show up because he knows all the secrets. He knows what you didn't tell your significant other. He knows the 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 the, the, uh, the, the mood or the or the, he knows he knows he was there. He was there. So if a person do not like literally get deliverance before they get married that devil gonna show up in marriage and how does the devil show up if you were a guy in the beginning of your marriage I mean not even begin when you guys were dating and you cannot sustain yourself before marriage and you literally cannot wait to have sex before marriage when you are in marriage when you're now married and you want sex she's just not interested that day then you think what the heck I married you so I can have this thing every day and she doesn't give it to you the first day and the second day and the third day and you thinking like yo I gotta I got, I got, I got get this and you don't have no self constraint you can't you can't constrain yourself you're gonna go out there and you're gonna go you're gonna get get that thing popped off. And what a lot of men don't understand is that. You see where you just pop that thing off at? Mm-hmm. If it's not a prostitute who knows that I just give you money and you go about your business. That woman that you just went to and did that pop off. Emo because women don't let you in their life, so they don't let you inside of them until it's like an emotional thing. And you start to build a relationship with that. Now you got you got more problems than you than you've ever than you've ever had. And you know what the worst thing is that men don't understand is that when you now go and you sleep with that person sleeps with another 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 woman, you've just taken a spirit of everybody that she's been with as well. So the tug of war that you and your wife personally had in your home that's just you and your wife you just added more spiritual more spiritual whatever to it because I try to tell people I said we're, we're, we're spiritual beings you can touch yourself you you feel yourself it's, it's, you feel it it's physical that's how real the spiritual world is is that real so you slept with one person so you think you slept with one person you didn't sleep with, some, with just one person. You just slept with everybody that's been in there. And 
now in the spiritual world, they all they working with you. They coming at you too. They're not gonna want to let you go. You've become a part of them. They're not gonna want to let you go. And this is where business starts going down. Frustration starts coming in. Fights between husband and wife. It, it, it just become a roller coaster. And men men would carry this burden because you can't go home to your wife and say, Oh, it's my fault that all this stuff is happening. It's my fault. I I I I I I, I broke the edge of protection on our marriage. Because that's what the man did without knowing. Hmm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I'm understanding. The, you see, because when you're married, when you when you when you actually it, it's it's sacred. It's sacred. When you take this woman before God and you say, this is the woman I want to be with, in prosperity, in success, in love, in this and that, this is the woman that I want to be with for the rest of my life. And you take her before your, your heavenly father. Who you, Who's your heavenly father? Isn't it your spiritual father? Your, your God? Right? Yeah. He's that real to you. And you say, Dad, I brought my wife to you. I want you to bless our union. God is the spirit. You just told all the spiritual, everybody in the spirit, this is the woman that I want to marry. This is, before you guys even get married, the week or the week before the marriage, or two weeks or even before, you guys have really, you cut yourself off some things. You prayed some things off of you. You've gotten yourself delivered for some things. So you're going to the father, husband and wife, holy matrimony, you're going as two amazing individuals to become one. Everything that you've done yesterday is so behind you. That is not even your life anymore. And then you guys get into the marriage and the second year, the third year, a misunderstanding happens. The protection that was on your marriage, that sacred blood that was on your marriage, the man just jumped out popped up because you can't God can't force you to do anything he's given us the power to make decisions to do whatever it is that we want to do and the moment that we started taking God out of our lives out of our marriages out of everything this is the reason why the world is the way it is now so men feel since they've been married, oh, I, I'm tired. Okay, why are you tired? You're tired of being responsible? Because that's what marriage does to a man. It makes you a responsible person. You have a wife. You have children. You know, yeah. to raise. You, you're, 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 you're now, you're, you're now, you're, you're either bored because it's the same old thing. Well, that's your fault. Make it fun. Exactly. Make you it found fun. her in the first place, so. Yeah. You were running after her like you couldn't sleep, you couldn't rest, you couldn't do nothing. Now you did it. Now you can't run after her no more. It's your job to make it fun. I grew up. I grew up in. I grew up in, in America, and then when I went to Nigeria, my parents took me to Nigeria to learn about the culture and all that. I was there for about a year and a half or two. I came back. I loved it. I came back. I never thought I was gonna marry Nigerian. Like that was like the bottom of my list. Like what? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh no, they took control. They took. Mm, I don't want that. But I prayed, and God gave me what I needed, not necessarily what I wanted, but eventually what I wanted, what I, what I, especially what I, what I wanted, the need, my husband, it was that need for me, he eventually became what I wanted. Mm. You understand? Yeah. He has some characters that, because I, 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 I I'm, the, I'm the shortest in my house. My brother, my brother is 6'4", the other one is 6'8". My dad is six three. Wow. My sister is my sister is six three. My my other sister is five eleven, and I'm five eight. So I never thought I was gonna bring somebody my height. I was never thought I was gonna marry anybody my height. I've always dated somebody six feet and over. So that was not in my uh, when I wanted, when I'm looking for my husband. These are some of the requirements. That was not a part of it. That was not a part of it. You know, and I like them dark and, and, and nice and sex no chocolate looking GQ. I like that. That's what I like. That's what I saw growing up. Yeah. And that's nothing that my husband is. <laughs> nothing. Wow. 
No. Nothing. But you know what? His love for me was so contagious. He he loved me. He didn't he didn't date me for a whole year before marrying me. Or date me for a whole five years before figuring out whether I was his wife or not. Our first date, he literally said it. You're my wife. I'm like, still you. <laughs> That's the point where guys and girls start to run. <laughs> because <laughs> Because you don't want to be stuck and you're hearing about something so quick. I don't even know you. You don't even know yeah, me. Yeah, but they don't understand how men process things. Right. If they understood how men process things, they would understand that. Because when he told me that, I was like, get up out of here. But then check this out. I was also praying for the same thing. I was praying that God, my husband, when he comes to me, I ain't got time for dating. I done did all that dating stuff. You know, let me know who, let me know this is him. And God has shown me in a dream way before then. So what's going on with a lot of women these days is that, first of all, they're not spiritual anymore. They're not connected to, 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 to God. They're not praying. You know, I have this book called The Power of a Praying Wife. And I will tell you, I was reading it yesterday and it said, um, the husband wrote something inside his wife's book. He says, there's a joke in our household when I refer to the number of years his wife Stormy and him had been married. And he would say, I always say it's been 25 wonderful years for me, but 25 miserable, miserable years for my, for my wife. Ha. Huh. Because you guys don't understand the level of what a woman has to go through to have a good home. It's a lot. That's why I try to take these women through it. Like, you need to understand. Sometimes you're going to want you and your husband to do it together. He may not have that time or does he even want to do that? Are you going to now crucify him because he's not really in the mood of washing the children's clothes today? He's busy. He's out there so that, you know, he can make family work he can make money so that we can pay these mortgages to do whatever my problem these days is you know men will come together and, uh, we gotta split this 50 50 and then you want her to submit and respect you like a man it doesn't work that way yeah it doesn't it doesn't work, it doesn't work that way i feel like there has that to we're, be, huh? i'm just saying i feel like there has to be a level of respect and communication effectively because People do things based on what they've learned or what they've been shown or what they've seen and then yeah. try to act like them. Like, you know how people like to do what's on the movies and then try it out? It's not... It's This is real life. So yeah. I, I, I get what you mean. And that material thing is a big issue because if you're not spiritually equipped, you can be materially decap decapitated. Like, you can be yeah. so confused about what to do with all the money you got and there's no one to give you that that direction even things on dates like i've been on dates where i've i've split the bill i've been on dates where she she offers to take the bill and i say no and she still insists and she does it there are some that i've been able to pay the bill and after the bill i feel like i just wasted money my friend told me one time that i should have disputed the charge and i was like i really should have because i just feel like some of these women don't understand the value of relationships and dating because they all they see is what is ahead especially now with this pressure of getting married and babies it's so much and the guys too are under pressure i mean we are not supposed to be pressured but, at all but, but you guys are not supposed to be pressured but the thing is a lot of men go into marriage you see the problem that a lot of guys are having is that they don't have they don't have male figure mentors Okay. They don't have male figure mentors. And they go into marriage thinking they'll marry somebody that look like a model. Because that's what, yes, she looks like a model. She looks good. She takes care of herself. She does all of that. Because when she's doing all that, she's just, she's caring for only herself. You now marry her. You still want her to look the same. You still want her to act the same, to be the same. She's changed. She's, 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 she's now your wife. She has your children now. You know, before on a Saturday, she can sleep till 2, 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon if she wants. And then wake up, get ready to go to a party. 
Now she got to wake up at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning to make breakfast for the kids and for you. Right. And try to get the house clean. What part of that are you trying to help? Help. What are you doing? So she can be all of this, but what part are you taking on this? So men used to also get themselves to a place where they feel, where they know that, okay, I'm going into this, my wife, my queen is having our children, and, and I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to be there for her. Mentally knowing that if she gains 30 more pounds, 40 more pounds, how are you going to help her to get to where she needs to, you know, where she's going to mentally be okay to know that, okay, you know what, sweetheart, this is okay, but, you know, it's, for health-wise, I can, I can help you. I can work with you. That's why men need to have what they have, what they have going on. They need to have money, have their business, have, be okay before they want to bring in a wife. The pressure is a lot on a woman. And a lot of these women right now, they're just not having it. They're not having it, but then they don't know that they also have some type of delinquent. You got a delinquency. You, 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 you don't want to get up and cook. You don't want to have to clean. You don't wash your clothes. You know, all you want to do is go to work, come home, watch TV, or go to the movies, or talk to your friends on the phone all night. You understand what I'm saying? That's scary. She, she just makes it feel like as long as you see me and I'm, in, and they wear t-shirts around the house. Okay, cool, that's cute. But then when you start having babies, you start having babies. The, the guy still want you. He still want your personality. He still want you to be fun and vibrant. But let it be. Let it be me and you. You're fun, you know. You, you me, and you, the, the children. But then a lot of these girls drag their friends into everything they doing. Which is wrong. Very wrong. Your friend is not married, but she still got to come over to your husband's house. She got to come to your house. Yeah, I know this girl. I know this girl, and I'm not even gonna say her name. But in the beginning, we used to think that, God, I mean, what the heck? It's like she took the man away from his family. But that's how it should be. It says a man will leave his home and clean with his wife. A lot of times, the family are doing something. He may not be able to go because him and his wife got things to do. Great. It's not like the the, the wife is gonna be the husband is gonna be um, beating on the wife like you never want to do anything with my family. You no 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 no. It takes a matured man and women to make a marriage work. It takes a matured man and women to make a marriage work. Yeah, that maturity thing is a big factor because not everyone is. And life is a maturing phase. So you have to go through things to know what you want and what you don't want. But some of them don't even know what they want. They, they, They don't know because they grew up with mom. All they know is, and, and this is what mom told them growing up. You make sure you have your own. You don't wait on no man. You don't wait on man to do no to do nothing. Whatever you need, you get. You don't wait on man for now. You make your own money. You don't pay no man to do nothing for you. All that all that crazy mentality they're putting in these kids and in these girls' heads. So by the time they grow up. They have all these expectations that they can do everything. And then when a little argument happens, you can go. I'll take care of my kids. I'll take care of this house. I'll take care. Hmm. How do you make and take that kind of nonsense? And then they wonder. I, I tell you, before, before I got into all of this, I used to say to myself, I said, you know what? Black men are more compatible with white women. And, and, and black women need white men. Sorry and to I say, say that but that's a true fact. I, I say that. that because a lot of white men, they are in touch with their, um, <laughs> they are in touch with their love side. They that ego, that many of not too many of them really put that ego out there. They they know how to suppress that stuff. They know how to allow their women to 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 grow and to blossom without them feeling any kind of way. A lot of black men need their ego to be caressed. They need somebody that's gonna be lifting them lifting them up all the time. They need somebody to say, you know what, you the you the you the you the king top. But what they fail to realize is you gotta be what's called a servant leader. You see the women that married a white man mm-hmm. that 
the white man is just he's loving her loving on her listening to her hearing you know hearing what she is saying you know massaging her being there for her he just love her and in that loving her it makes her want to do whatever that man needs to be done yep that's the true submission it's for you to love her completely love her like she matters to you and you can you ain't even gotta tell her to do nothing she'll do it you will come home and your whole house would be like a dog on every day will be a valentine's day in your house mm. that's but that's what you have be. to do it's not it's not you always have to show i'm the man dude how you the man and we spend the bill 50 50. <laughs> Right. How you the man we playing the bill 50 50? God forbid the girl is pregnant and she and she can't even work. Some men would think you better get your butt out there and go do something because you gotta pay these bills. Really? So I, I feel sorry, so I talk to a lot of my set trying to let them know that we, we gotta train our boys to be men. Because once we, they become men, you cannot take them back to be boys again. That's true. Once they become grown, they are grown boys, not men. Mm-hmm. Because many of them didn't have that. They didn't have a male. They didn't have a, a father figure. They didn't have that. So if you really want to train them, you got to let them know, look, this is what you're doing for me as your mother. You got to do times 10 of that for your wife. You got to be there for her. Got to listen to her. It's, it's hard for y'all guys. I don't understand. You guys are 70% introverts. Many of you. I think it's because guys don't like to show their emotion and they like to hold it in. So it builds up. They don't up. like to communicate. Yeah, they don't. And it's not good. But then again, if you do, a lot of them say, well, if I do, it's not like it helps anything. She's still going on and on. Like, if I tell her this is my problem, she's going to... Every marriage is different, and it's it's. But the basic, basic, basic. There's this guy, this pastor. He, he and his wife came together, and they wrote this book. So she was saying, she was telling the man what the what what she as a woman would want from a man, and he was talking from the, um, the perspective of being a guy what he would want from a woman. And um, one of it is that men, you have to give your women attention. They need it. That's what we need. And a lot of men ain't got time for that. It's like, it didn't make me no money. <laughs> <laughs> we sitting down here, we sitting down here listening to you. It ain't put no money in my pocket. <laughs> but they don't understand that it will eventually put money in your pocket. True. When she's happy and the house is happy, you're able to do what you need to do. Some men, when they have arguments with their wife, they can't even drive straight. They can't drive right. They can't. They'll be they'll be giving a speech and they, and they can't even give it right. They're not, because <laughs> your spirit is off. Yep. And women, what a man wants from us is acceptance. That's true. It's acceptance. He wants you to accept him the way he is. He don't want you to change him. He don't want to be like. He don't want to be like like John down the block. Look what John doing for his wife. Look what John doing with his kid. Look what John. I remember a time when my, when, when I didn't know about all this stuff. Early my years of marriage. And some of my husband's friends. And I'd be like, look what this is. He said, you know what you're going to do? I think you're going to ask him to be. Maybe he can be your husband. Maybe he, he, he probably interested in the second wife. Hmm. I was like, what? Well, since you want to know what they're doing down there. And you don't want to worry about what we, what's going on here. How we can fix what's going on here. First of all. And you're worrying about, you, you're looking at what John doing for his wife. You know? Yeah. Everybody needs to look at their own house and how they build it and not other people's because other conditions that matter, you don't even know half of it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But the most important thing, like I said, they need to take the, the, the personality, personality test. test. Take the personality test. Ask some of these questions. Is the woman God fearing? Is the man God fearing? Like a, a, one of the, uh, she's a relationship coach. She was saying that, you know, just because the guy doesn't go to church doesn't mean that he doesn't have a personal relationship with God. My thing is, um, he can have a personal relationship with God, 
But when we have kids, what are you, you going to want us to do? Those are things that you going to want to, you know, you need, you need to do your due diligence. A lot of people these days are getting married for the wrong reasons. Marriage are not lasting. Some people don't even care. Some people want to be, they, they, they in the mindset that if this, if this marriage works out for five years, then I'm good. After five years, I'll go somewhere else. That's when your kid is five years old. Yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine? And right now, the craziest thing is a lot of these girls that are single out here, the ones that have literally been married before and divorced, they're the ones that's running after other people's husbands. One of them said, one of them said, when I was working at, at, at my business with my husband, my husband and I had a business called La Pau Shipping. She came in there and she said, well, somebody, somebody messed up my marriage, so I don't, I don't mind messing up somebody else's marriage. I don't care. She was like, it was a woman that took my man away. So, I, I, so if, a, if a married man wants to talk to me, I'm going to talk to him all day long. No standard. Uh-uh. Yeah, where, where, where's the standard? No standard. Women have to have standard, you know. Yeah, they do. Women have the to. The God, be yeah, our God just said, "Don't have sex." I mean, it's just so it, it's crazy because even Christians, they call yourself Christians, and you Christ-like, and you following Christ. And I'm not saying that because I didn't do it. I was not a virgin before I got married, but I didn't have nobody telling me in my ears that I couldn't have sex before marriage. There's a difference. I didn't. Nobody told me. Nobody told me, because if they told me, I would have asked why. I was going to church. I ain't read my Bible to that part. <laughs> I ain't read my Bible. I ain't get my Bible didn't get there yet. So if I was dating a guy, and if I wanted to give of myself to you, I'll do it. Not because you asked me to, but because I wanted to. Exactly. You understand? It's not, oh, my stuff hurting. I need to get this. Oh, boy, you better go figure yourself out somewhere. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, go true. figure yourself out somewhere. You understand? So when I break up in relationships, it's not because, you know, I don't cry about those situations. Um, I don't because um, I got into it. Not you forcing me to do anything, but me doing whatever it is that I, I wanted to do. And I don't date guys that don't fit the the um, my prospect of husband. I don't date them kind of. I don't date them kind of dudes, you know. At, the, at that time, so by the time and, and the church that I was going to, they were not CCC. No, because they they not Pentecostal. They they all not all of them. Possibly, I'm I'm, saying, I'm just saying. At the time, the one I was going to, they were all doing everything with everybody, but they were not going to be doing it with me because it was a no no with me. <laughs> yeah, I knew what I wanted. Right. You know, so these young girls and guys these days, I'm just asking them, like, women, if you really, really love this guy and you really want a great marriage, first of all, learn how can you care for him. Learn what is his aspirations. What does he want to do in life? How can you how can you help him to get there? You know, how can you help him to be able to achieve what he wants to achieve in life? Or well, both of you guys to try to do it together. Yeah. Is it that you're gonna? Is it that you guys are gonna? You know, come to terms and say, okay, maybe the first three years we don't, we don't, we don't want children yet, and and that means you you better not be African. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. Ah. And if it's something that you guys agreed on, then let it be something that you guys agreed on. And when family members start coming around and talking or whatever, you know, you know, we're not ready right now. Don't even say we're not ready right now. That's a whole other thing. You know, God is good. We're waiting on the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because words are powerful. Words That's are powerful. True. Yep. That's you true. know, again, again, we've done an hour, but we can go on and on and on and on and on and on about marriage and, and, and all of that. But when it comes down to it, I just want men to understand that the way that we were created. That's why I say we don't know ourselves before we get married. A woman needs to know the way a man was formed created what makes him tick how 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 is he understand his ego understand if you rub that ego too much he, he may go outside he may have to go outside to go get it lifted up again and what does that do to you 
And then when you now say you want a divorce and all of this stuff that he's been doing, is it really what you want? Like, because when he's gone, he's gone. It's not two, three, four years down the road that you hear he's married to another woman, then you're like... Because what hurts me so much is the fact that a woman would leave, she wants a divorce, and she would paint that man like he's the worst thing that ever, ever happened. But you have four or five kids for him. Mm. And then you get on social media, stop bashing a guy. What do you think you're doing to your children? You got a son. You have a son. And, and this is what you can say about his father. He's a monster. Well, you gave birth to a monster then because that child ain't yours. It belonged to him. That's his DNA. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things we do not think about before we do. Before we do them. If a man is beating you in a relationship, no, 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 I'm not into that. I, I don't care what she could have said that made you bash her head into the wall. Mm -mm. I don't care. Anything that makes you want to lift up your hands should have should have should have made you to move your feet to get out of the situation. Yeah. Walk away. If you ain't got the power to walk away, and what you want to do is, is take her beautiful skin and slam it and damage it somewhere, and then come back to my you love her. She the best thing that's ever happened to you. But then you don't gave her a black eye. Nah, man. Nah, that's crazy. So let, we can go on and on. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Let them mm -hmm. let them simmer. You know, listen to this replay, rewind, and get a feel of what they need to do for themselves. And then, if there's any way they can reach you, how can they reach you? Yeah, um, by email or uh, I'm on YouTube. Married, let's talk. It's married, let's talk. You see me there. Um, I, I do a lot of talking engagements on there on um facebook is rashida malade sule on my that's my personal but if you are a married woman and you would like to um hear some of my live um, um videos that i do with my women on there the talks that i have with them then go to married let's talk not the one with the ring you're going to see the one with the ring and then you're going to see the one that has a picture of a lot of women in front wearing a black t-shirt um, that's the one that you click on and you'll be able to, I'll be able to, to bring you in so that you can hear more live, um, sessions. And also there's a lot of women that are given a whole lot more advice on marriage. Um, they can also reach me on Instagram as well. They can follow me on Instagram as well. So, and another thing is, um, Rashida at Married Let's Talk. And it's R A S H E E D A at Married Let's Talk. Okay, dot com. They can email me on there if you have any, anything you want to talk about. You know, let's talk about it. I'll pray with you. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you under my wings. I'll coach you. Um, because God has given women power to be able to, um, have the life that we want yeah. and I know that many men many women want the best for their husbands um, many good wives not every woman is a wife many good wives want the best for their husband want the best for their children and how we can use prayer to turn all of that around prayers do work it's just that violent prayers is what God is not trying to answer mm -hmm. it's some violent prayers <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let them die Nope, not no. today. <laughs> You're gonna send it back. <laughs> mm, thank you so much for allowing me to, you know, have this session with you. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you mm. so much for joining the We Don't Play podcast channel. We don't play. We don't we play. Don't play. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank uh, you for listening to us, guys. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.